Good evening. Welcome to Carol's Kitchen. Uh, tonight we are going to make chicken pot pie. This is my own recipe that I fabricated over the years and my family loves it. So hopefully you will too. Um, this actually just came out of the oven. I'm going to set it over here while we get started. And uh, my youngest asked me tonight, Mom, why aren't you making a dessert? And uh, I'm sharing all of my favorite recipes with you. And this just happened to be one of them. So it might take a little more time tonight to get this one put together. Um, but the first step is going to be to get our sauce going. Uh, this is what I call a healthy and a hearty chicken pot pie. Uh, it's healthy because instead of using a cream of chicken soup can, which has lots of sodium in it, um, I'm making my own homemade sauce. Uh, it's a white sauce that has uh, chicken broth, just a can, um, which or two cups if you make your own broth, uh, some black pepper in the, the white sauce, two tablespoons of butter, and then a half a cup of flour. So I'm going to get that started on the stove while we do the rest. Get that going. First step is to melt the butter. Um, and while the butter is melting, we can get started on the next part of it. And that is to talk about the chicken. Of course, with chicken pot pie, you gotta have your chicken. If it's uh, Thanksgiving or a holiday where you have turkey, I've also substituted turkey on hand. But here we've got a, a cute little chicken from Kerwin's, uh, but any supermarket uh, often has the rotisserie chickens. I've gotten them at Kroger's or Myers. Um, also Walmart has them, but I like Kerwin's the best. Um, so the first part is gonna be to just start taking off uh, the chicken from the bones. Now I know that Costco is one of uh, probably many stores that also sells the chicken um, already shredded, but if you're looking to save some pennies, that's one way to uh, do it yourself. Um, back when I was a stay-at-home mom and working part-time from home, one thing I did to save money was just to cook that chicken in a crock pot. Um, it's probably the cheapest way you can buy chicken, or at least I found that it was. Uh, and then also let it cool and shred on your own. Um, one way to also reduce costs with this recipe is to make your own broth. So once you're done with your chicken and getting all the, the chicken off of the bones, you can boil those bones in some water for about 20 minutes. Longer if you want. Let it cool. Then use a colander to separate the bones and um, that broth and then you have your own homemade broth. So as you can see, I've got my little chicken about, oh, about halfway done. I'm gonna check on the butter. That's melted. So now that the butter's melted, I'm gonna add two cups of chicken broth, or one can. And since I'd prefer not to do any dishes, I don't have to, I'm gonna use that same can to measure out my next ingredient, which is almond milk. Uh, I've also used regular cow's milk, but I've found as I've gotten older that I do much better with non-dairy. And there's less sugar in this. It's an unsweetened almond milk. I've tried using coconut milk and soy milk as alternatives, just based on what I've had on hand. And I found that soy milk is not a good alternative for this white sauce. But you could absolutely use cow's milk if that's what you have on hand and what you like. The next thing and the last thing we'll add to that sauce is a half a cup of flour. Yeah, I've learned with substituting with flour that that does make a big difference. I might try a wheat flour, but in this case, I'm just going to go with white flour. And the next step is to use your handy dandy whisk and whip, whisk it all together. 
That's something we'll be doing a lot to make sure that that white sauce does not burn. And the pan you use can make a big difference here. If you have a pan with a nice um, solid bottom, it helps it not to burn. We'll let that heat up as we finish de, um, de, well, taking the chicken off of our chicken, little chicken here. I get rid of the skins, and it's another way to make it a little healthier. I guess if you really loved your skins and on your chicken and you wanted to enhance the flavor, you could put that in there too. I have learned uh, as I've gotten rotisserie chickens that the next day it's a little drier than if you get it uh, right when it's coming out of the oven of the store that you get it from. So this chicken was purchased about an hour and a half ago. So it's nice and fresh and soft. And in this recipe, you, I use two chickens for a regular size cake pan. Of course, if you were gonna have two people in your house or if you're a single person, then you would probably wanna reduce that or make a big batch. Save time, less dishes, which is always good and then freeze portions of it. As it's getting colder outside, this is a great recipe to uh, give a try. Or perhaps get your own chicken pot pie recipe out and, and make a batch of that. All right, so I've got most of my chicken off the bone now. You can probably hear my sauce in the background. I'm gonna give that another twirl with the whisk. Doing that's going to help that flour not to clump up. Or burn to the bottom of the pan. Um, I wanted to share this with you as we're waiting for that. Um, this recipe was given to me when I was first getting married um, over almost 19 years ago. So the original recipe does have the cream of chicken soup uh, in it instead of that white sauce. Um, but it's just kind of fun. I haven't gotten rid of it even though I don't use it anymore because it's a good thing to remind me of when I first got married. So um, next we've got our chicken all ready to go. We'll set that aside. Okay, so for the next step, if you're in a hurry, Frozen peas and carrots is the way to go. Just pop them in the microwave, they're done, ready to add to your dish. I've also learned, you know, as you make do with what you have on hand, um, I've had, a while, a while back we made a roast, and um, from that we had leftover carrots and potatoes, so um, I did that in preparation for this tonight, and uh, we're gonna add that uh, to our chicken pot pie. Um, you can see how they've kind of been roasted, and I'm sure many of you have had that before, so you know what I'm talking about, how that sauce, or not the sauce, but all the juices from that meat really is going to flavor our pot pie tonight, and those potatoes and the carrots. I'll tell you a funny story about my dog as I'm doing this. Um, his name is Dozer, and he's a little puggle who loves carrots. <laughs> so we have started giving him carrots at the end of each night. And uh, he probably started off giving him maybe six or seven carrots. And I spoil them. Now I give him more like nine, 10, 11 little carrots. And I'll tell you that dog is a little more active, I think, because he's getting carrots with his dog food. But. These potatoes and carrots are already soft after having been in the crock pot pretty much all day. I'm going to take a break again and check on the white sauce and do a little twirl with the whisk. Okay, medium heat is a good way to go. That is already getting thick. So I'm going to turn the heat off. 
might be a good time to set your oven to 425 degrees. That's what we're going to cook it at. Uh, and I will show you that sauce so you can see the consistency of it. Okay. So I guess when you don't have a little pot holder, I'm going to go with my big pot holder. Uh, as you know, I work for the library. This is a library program. And I had one of our patrons come in and tell me about her butterfly bush, which are colors kind of like this, this big, uh, I'm going to call it a pot holder. Um, anyways, when we were looking for uh, cabinets for our kitchen, um, I saw these and the lady who worked there was willing to sell them to me super cheap. It reminded me of the beauty of those butterfly bushes. Uh, but anyways, here's our sauce. Uh, hopefully you can see on the video how thick it is. Um, it's kind of moving around the pan. It doesn't need to be cooked anymore. If it did, it gets super thick. So I'm just going to set it over here for now. Alrighty, and carrots and potatoes are just about done. I'm going to add those. And then we'll bring our white sauce back over and we'll add our chicken and our carrots and our potatoes. Um, again, it's also nice to add peas. But tonight, leftover roast, that's what you have on hand. You roll with it. That's the beauty of this dish is you can kind of pull different things of what you have, whether it's turkey or chicken, and make it work. Okay, so I used a bigger saucepan tonight knowing that I'm going to add my chicken and my potatoes and my carrots in right into that. Um, one thing I forgot to add earlier that I'll add now is black pepper. And to be honest, I've never really measured it out. I guess depending on your taste, your preferences, um, you can add more if you like a lot of pepper or a little. I'm going to add a lot because it flavors it, and I really like that. Okay. Kind of makes me want to sneeze. <laughs> but we're going to add in our chicken. Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Whew. Just from the pepper. I assure you I am not sick. <laughs> oh. Times we live in, we think about those things, huh? Okay, so now we've got our chicken and our white sauce together. We're going to add our potatoes and our carrots. Alrighty. This is one of those dishes that you can make ahead of time. And... Um, like we talked about the single portions freezing them. You could freeze the whole pot pie if you wanted to and get it out for a, a holiday meal, a Thanksgiving, and not too far out, Christmas. Um, you, this is something you might consider. If not for the meal itself, you might uh, have it on hand and ready to go for your family who might be in town uh, either the night before or perhaps the next day, depending on how late they stay. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit more pepper. <laughs> Hopefully it will not make me sneeze this time. Okay, so there's our mixture. You can see in the pot. We'll set that aside and go on to the next step, uh, which is to put our crust in a pan. Okay, so with that... Back when I needed to save my pennies, and I, I still do, but when I was a stay-at-home mom, if you didn't eat it, you didn't buy it unless you needed it. So one way to do that was to make your own crust. For tonight, and most of the time that I make this, uh, I buy my crust. And once again, this is something you can easily find at most places. Uh, tonight, this is a Walmart brand. I actually do favor the Kerwin brand for crust too. But that's a personal preference, not necessarily a library preference. There are lots of places that have that. 
So you might be wondering, okay, so I've got a cake pan, but the crust that you buy in the store is for like a circular pie. So as you can see, yeah, you're right. It does not fit my pan. So a quick trick, I've got my knife. I'm just gonna cut along the side where it's thickest and put that at the top at the bottom where it's lacking. Okay, so you can see, even though it's not perfect, if you're looking for something quick, it gets the job done and it tastes really good. So we've got our bottom of the pie. And before you do that, you'll also want to spray your pan with non-stick spray. I've already done that. But now we're just going to add our uh, chicken and our roasted potatoes and roasted carrots and peas, if you have them, into our pan. Tonight, and what I'm using right now is my pan is actually one of those foil pans you can just get at the store. Um, I have one cake pan right now, so that's, that's the one that you saw first, the pot pie was in that. But as you can see, that fills that out really nicely. You're on your way to a thick, hearty, healthy pot pie. <laughs> okay, in fact, that pan, the sides are a little bit lower than my cake pan. So you're not going to go hungry if you have this for your dinner. Alrighty, and same thing with the top. I'm going to roll it out just like if I were for a pie. I'm going to set it on the top and cut the fat off of the sides. As you can see, just like the bottom, we need to cut the sides and we'll add that to the top. Okay, now this is the fun part. So for family dinners, I would put an M in our ch chicken pot pie crust on top for Montgomery. Um, I put a G in there in the first one that I showed you for Gibsonburg Library. Um, so for this one, I think I'll just do another M because we'll probably have this for a family dinner soon. Okay, the next part is something that I, I can't even remember where I learned this, um, but it, it really makes a nice uh, addition as far as the taste goes. So I have an egg here. I'm going to crack it and separate the whites from the yolk again. Um, in this recipe, you only need the white. So I have an empty peanut butter jar here where I'm going to put the yolk in. I've heard that you can make noodles with egg yolks. So if you have time and you're looking for something fun to do this winter, that might be another project to consider. Okay. And with that egg yolk, you're just gonna uh, dump it over the top. And that's gonna make a nice brown coating once it comes out of the oven. And I've got your little tool here to spread it around. Okay. And I will hold this up in an attempt to not spill the, the yolk. But there you have your own hearty, healthy chicken pot pie. And I'll show you again. As you can see from when it cools, or after it's been baked, you can see that nice honey brown color on top. And if you have any questions about this recipe or anything library related, feel free to call the Gibsonburg Library at 419-637-2173. I look forward to hopefully connecting with you the second Monday of next month. Until then.